Hello everyone, it's Hagato and it's been a while. Um, oh, I was just about to apologize, but you know, I hate th I hate that thing YouTubers do where they're gone for a bit and they're like, I'm so sorry for like letting you guys down. I'm so sorry. I, I don't know why. I just hate it because it's like, why are you apologizing? Like, you don't have to apologize. So I'm not, I'm not going to apologize. This is just a hobby. So I'm not going to apologize. But thank you if, if you are still here, if you're watching, if you're still subscribed. Thank you so much. But let's actually get onto the video because today I want to talk about Dreamcatcher. If this intro seems rambly, that is because I am unscripted and I'm really bad at unscripted content. I don't do it. I need a very concise schedule and a very concise script and I need to plan everything out. I don't know if that's the autism or what, but um, let's let's just go about it because I feel like I don't have too many like compelling thoughts on this more so feelings so i was just having a lot of trouble thinking about what i'd write down so i don't think i need to write i think i just want to yap and ramble on so if you're up for that let's talk dreamcatcher so just recently dreamcatcher just came out with their latest mini virtuous and i can't lie i was not nervous but i didn't quite know what to expect because Dreamcatcher just have been in this place where they're kind of, I don't want to say exploring, but they've been expanding on their sound. I want to say ever since like because-ish era, like we've just been hearing different things from them. So I don't know what I'm going to expect. Come back to come back. I loved Bomb Voyage. Bomb Voyage is like one of my favorite songs of all time already. But then for OOTD, I, I don't like that song at all. I'm sorry. I, a lot of people like it. I don't like it. Um, It's just, it's not quite in the Dreamcatcher realm. It didn't even feel like a good expansion on their work. It just felt, it felt like a side quest and I wasn't appreciating it. So I was curious to see how Justice would be in like Virtuous as a whole. And I love it. Like, I absolutely love it. And I, like, I was very surprised that on first listen, I was immediately like, this is amazing. Especially because this is the first, like, mini that has gotten my attention this month. I oh, I just made a video that was like, oh my god, K-pop's coming back. I'm getting in my K-pop phase. And, um, I, I, I guess kind of sort of after that, I needed yet another break. I don't even think this is to the fault of K-pop. I think I'm just still too burned out on some levels or I don't know, I guess my life's just too busy. I just have not been keeping up. Even with things I should be keeping up with, like tell me why Chu released a comeback and tell me why it like took me a day or two to get to it. Like Chu's my girl, Th that would never happen usually. And then Nayeon released something and tell me why like I wasn't replaying that like I thought it would. And Red Velvet released Cosmic. Red Velvet came back, like my queen of all queens. And I've only listened to that album twice and it didn't do much for me. So it's been a very weird month. Yet Dreamcatcher came back to save me once again and get me like back into replaying an earworm. Let me get to what I like about the whole era. So Justice is just this very loud and empowering song. It's so anthemic and I feel like... We haven't had a lot of good anthemic K-pop releases in a hot minute and this track is just so grand and so amazing. I can just imagine being in a big stadium listening to this live and just how powerful that would feel. The main thing that helps this is this boom clap pattern you see all throughout the song. Let me actually give you like an example for what I mean. Okay, if you're an audio listener, look at your damn screen right now. I mean... I mean, if you wanna, I guess. But yeah, look at your screen and le like, let's let's go through this together. Like, bear with me, okay? So so we get a kick, yeah, psh, like a very heavy stomp kick, right? And then and then we get it. We get a nice. We get a big clap. That's not a big clap. That's a big clap. That that clap has clap to it. And then you know you 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 got your kick clap um do that again and and then just loop it and you have a song that's you guys music production is that easy who said it was hard oh my dear God. 
this drum pattern then plays for the next two tracks of the album. It's just things like this that makes this album so cohesive and actually feel like a mini album. One of my biggest problems with modern music and just K-pop is the fact that albums aren't really albums it's just an amalgamation of songs and like personally i don't always love feeling like i'm listening to a different artist on every single track of your album like i, I want consistency but then k-pop stands are so brain rotted that if too many tracks are similar they'll be like why is the entire album the same and like they'll complain about that it's a freaking album anyways back to dreamcatcher the next track we have on the album is stomp and I, okay, I don't like when K-pop students do the, oh my god, this B-side is better than the title track, this should have been the title track. But dare I say this B-side is better than the title track, this B-side should have been the title track. It is, it's so good, I feel like it does everything Justice does, but better. It ha like, it has the anthemic big vibe going on. But it just takes it to another level. The instrumental is like so grungy and textured, but then the way the vocals stand on top of it, it's like so airy, causing this beautiful contrast. And then for the pre-chorus, you know, like the pre-chorus of Justice is just like very basic. It's it's just taking you to the chorus. There's like really nothing special about it. But the pre-chorus for Stomp like gave me all the harmonics I wanted from Justice. And it's just so pretty and like builds up so well for this anti-chorus and <laughs> this anti-chorus isn't like most anti-choruses and i don't know if it's like a rock thing i'm sorry i'm really not that familiar with rock like the closest thing i go to rock is dreamcatcher I'm, I'm not that person i fear and like traditional like k-pop formulas usually have the chorus build really big and then the anti-drop just hits to subvert ex expectations and that's pretty much it but for stomp the pre-chorus builds, but it like it doesn't build so heavily. It builds ever so slightly, getting you ready for something big, but like ever so slightly edging you. And then the like anti-chorus, anti-drop first part comes in, but instead of subverting your expectations, it just the way it hits, it just makes it feel even more powerful because it just creates so much space they're only yelling stomp so it just hits so well and then the track immediately ramps back up we then have two rings and i cannot take this song seriously for two reasons first of all the guitar riff it gives me that wild wild west k-pop vibe like bad news by kiss of life um sorry not sorry by itsy that that one terrible end mix song Actually, that song wasn't bad. I meant that one terrible The Seraphim song. But yeah, that's the energy it gives me. And every time I hear that in K-pop, immediate turn off. And then the second reason is that it just sounds like a car advertisement. Like, tell me why I feel like I'm about to buy a Tesla when I play this song. I, I just, I can't, I, I can't take this song seriously as a song itself. I, I feel like this was a rejected advertisement. I feel like they just picked this up from a Honda Civic ad. So yeah, this song is pretty much a skip, but it's not bad. But then the album gets amazing again with Fireflies. This song is so Luna coded. I can't explain it. It gives me that like, it gives me that like Rain 51 DB vibe with like a mix of Sonatine. It's so nostalgic, especially that first verse, the piano notes and just how they like glistened along reminded me so much of Sonatine. Just the entire track, it's so mesmerizing and it's like so just nostalgic in 90s. I love it. Like, oh my, like, <sighs> Just I, 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 I play the track and I feel like I'm at home and that's all I have to say. Oops, I was supposed to say this first, but this is how you do your arbitrary like ballad moment for your K-pop album. I'm like, don't just throw it in because you had to throw it in. This, it actually makes sense in context of this album, especially with the intro track, that being like a melancholy, like piano heavy track. It just... It circles the album out so well. You start off with that soundscape, then you get into the soundscape of like Stomp and Justice, that like guitar heavy, hard rock anthemic soundscape. And then you end here and you just circle back to right where you were. It's like, it's perfect. It's so cohesive. This is how an album is supposed to be. But yeah, Dreamcatcher has come back to save once again and give us quality music. If that's if there's one thing Dreamcatcher is gonna do, it's good. It's to deliver every single time. Well, okay, not every single time because we have OTD, but most of the time deliver. 
tell me your thoughts in the comments i'm super interested to hear thank you so much for watching and i do have some bigger videos planned and that's low-key why i've been on a break for so long that and just like the general k-pop right now blah 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 so yeah stay tuned um have a nice life i would say i love you but like i don't know you like that so like just like be well